action we take creates footprints, and footprints can build into disturbing tracks of change for our planet. Unprecedented growth in consumption in the past 60 years is putting strains on Earth's natural resources never before seen. Reducing our consumptive footprint and living more sustainable lifestyles are important steps we can take to protect our future, our social future, our environmental future, our economic future. It just makes sense. Existing buildings present one of our best opportunities to reduce energy and resource consumption and improve sustainability. Improving the way buildings are designed, built, renovated, and operated significantly alters their use of energy and other basic resources. Throughout Pennsylvania, the Guaranteed Energy Savings Act, or GISA, defines how energy service companies, also known as ESCOs, can provide a practical way for public sector entities to finance energy saving projects in their facilities. One of the most attractive features of GISAs is the guaranteed energy cost savings that pays for all project costs over the life of the contract, allowing agencies to free up scarce budget resources for other needed services. In southwestern Pennsylvania, Allegheny County expects to save $15 million in energy and operating costs over the next 10 years. New energy efficient equipment and retrofits won't cost taxpayers a penny since the county's ESCO arranged to finance them entirely from the energy cost savings. The goal is to provide substantial, sustainable, and measurable resource savings to the county's existing buildings and facilities. Allegheny County, like many county governments, has a large portfolio of properties. We own about 125 buildings. And we're standing here in our courthouse, which was built in 1888. And the principles of good building design that apply today, particularly in regard to energy efficiency, are not really what was employed at that time. We were able to start our first ESCO project about 10 years ago. And we identified some of the better opportunities for savings. And now we're moving on to do another ESCO project, which we hope will help us to tackle some of those more difficult projects and make even more savings for our taxpayers. The primary beneficiary of the county's first ESCO was the courthouse, where low-hanging fruit or easily obtained gains could be achieved. High efficiency lighting that upheld the historic integrity of the building was installed and is producing big savings in the form of reduced utility costs. In the attic, a major chiller installation consolidated various heating and cooling units in the courthouse into a centralized energy efficient system. The current ESCO project began with a detailed audit of electricity, steam, natural gas and water usage at the largest county owned buildings. The most striking area of the audit was how significant the steam use savings will be. Steam is by far the county's highest utility cost by unit, with prices that are among the most expensive in the nation. Fortunately, the fixes are simple and cheap. Restoring steam traps, replacing insulation, and ensuring that any unused heat returns back into the system. Other energy saving measures expect to save taxpayers $1.5 million annually. To reduce electricity consumption, Allegheny County is upgrading lighting controls in its jail and its four county-owned nursing homes. Plus, ESCO contractors are replacing old chillers, boilers, heating and air conditioning systems, and improving plumbing controls and water conservation measures. In addition to the major savings on steam, electricity, natural gas, and water usage, the county expects to reduce its annual greenhouse gas emissions by 4.6 million pounds of carbon dioxide, 188 pounds of nitrogen oxides, and 1,411 pounds of sulfur oxides.
An ESCO project is a great way for us to be able to find the capital to invest in our buildings, make the improvement, address deferred maintenance needs, and not have a negative impact on the taxpayer. So we save money, we save water, we reduce our carbon footprint, and we do it all in a way where the savings pays for the actual improvement itself, which is terrific. Just like Allegheny County, the GISA ESCO process is integrating sustainability into overall facility planning at state-owned buildings. Since the process began, Pennsylvania has reduced energy consumption by over 18%, saving taxpayers $2.2 million annually in utility costs. A prime example is the Rachel Carson State Office Building in Harrisburg which used an ESCO to reduce energy consumption by over 30%, water consumption by over 15%, and earned both the prestigious EPA Energy Star rating and the U.S. Green Building Council's LEED EB Gold certification. The governor's residence also earned LEED EB Gold for using the same GISA ESCO process. In Pennsylvania, the Energy Management Office implements energy and environmental strategies that continuously improve facility use and management through performance contracting. Energy savings contracts are the right way to go for a governmental entity that does not have upfront capital funding to be used. Um, the costs of the project are paid through the savings, so it does not need to be worked into the budget. The GISA process works through an RFP procurement method. The owner of the project will eventually narrow contractors down to one to develop the final scope of work, including equipment selection, commissioning, training, and project costs. Here at the Farm Show Complex and Expo Center in Harrisburg, recently installed energy-saving measures are expected to reduce operating costs by more than $300,000 and prevent 1,650 metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions annually. For the past 80 years, this building has showcased the latest advancements in agriculture, and now it boasts eco-friendly and money-saving investments that will hopefully be replicated in structures across the state. The original building to the Farm Show Complex opened in 1931. It was very environmentally friendly, and they took advantage of the natural light that was available with skylights in the building. Then over the years, as the complex grew and they kept adding buildings, uh, that sort of disappeared a little bit, that concept of taking advantage of this natural light. And in fact, there are places throughout the building where the windows have been covered up. And we're now uncovering them to bring back the natural lighting. The original building really took advantage of the sun, which is what we're doing now. Our energy savings project is a three and a half million dollar project made possible through the Guaranteed Energy Savings Act we're guaranteed that the savings that we experience will be enough to cover the cost of the project plus provide additional savings. Highlights of the upgrade include replacing more than 8,000 lighting fixtures with energy efficient bulbs, adding aerators to sinks and low flow valves to toilets and urinals, installing a rooftop solar system to provide supplemental hot water to the existing one exchanging inefficient motors and heaters with more energy efficient models, and installing a photovoltaic solar system to generate energy for the 24 acre complex. These upgrades complement other green measures already in place. A wind turbine that produces 4,000 kilowatt hours of electricity a year, an extensive recycling program, and a rooftop rainwater collection tank. We're finding more and more of our customers and potential customers are asking us what we're doing from a going green standpoint. What are we doing to be environmentally correct? We're finding that's become a competitive advantage for us that we've made this investment in terms of going green. It's not only a good social practice, it's proving to be a great business practice to us, not only for saving money, but for generating additional income. Residents of York, Pennsylvania are also realizing that sustainability pays for itself. Reducing consumption and improving efficiency yields the highest economic, environmental, and resource benefits. 
Nowhere is this more apparent than in the city's school district, where an ESCO project turned around schools in desperate need of repair. One of the most dire facilities was the old Ferguson Elementary, where Principal Sarah Baker stood in front of the school board to tell them about the bugs that had bored into the building's wood, only to re-emerge each spring, and the chunks falling off the building, and a door jam that fell apart. Our prior building was built in 1956, and the purpose was to be used for about 10 years until they could actually build a more efficient school. Needless to say, it was actually in existence till 2010, and it was great because you could stand and watch all the energy go right out the, the windows. You could stand and watch the heat rise out of the ceiling. Uh, we probably had, on a rainy day, 20 to 30 leaks in the cafeteria that we just had random buckets sitting everywhere. Tar would leak down through the roof, so it was very, very poor just on a daily basis to keep things running. So it was interesting to start building a new building to kind of alleviate some of that. In York City School District, we have 12 facilities that we maintain. In the three elementary schools, there's been nothing done to them since 1972. And with the budget the way it was, we looked at an ESCO project or an energy project. We called three energy companies in. They came in, they toured our facilities, and they all came back with proposals as to what we could do and how much energy we could save doing it. We ended up going with a company where we were able to do $7.2 million worth of work. It cost us $600,000 a year out of my operating budget, which came out of the energy side of it. And the first year alone, we've saved over a million dollars with the work that we did. In three of the schools, geothermal systems were installed, taking advantage of the Earth's stored heating and cooling capacity keeping groundwater at a constant temperature and cutting energy costs in half. Other energy saving measures include changing two boiler systems from steam to more affordable forced hot water, a swing or shoulder months boiler at Smith Elementary that uses less energy during the spring and fall, variable frequency drives for motors, new circulating pumps, T5 lighting in the three gymnasiums, saving almost $4,000 a year in energy costs. Classroom carpeting made out of recycled truck tires. And digital controls that can be observed from anywhere in the district. As for Ferguson Elementary, a new building is the result of what the York City School District learned from their ESCO project and reflects a commitment to implementing sustainability across their entire portfolio of facilities. Some of the school's sustainable features are natural light in all classrooms, along with day lighting controls to reduce energy costs, energy efficient lighting in the cafeteria gym, low flow fixtures, and improvement to the indoor air quality. The district is pursuing platinum level LEED certification for Ferguson, making it the first elementary school in Pennsylvania to achieve such status. The biggest plus on the energy saving projects is that it is work that can be done to our district to improve our energy costs, which has no impact on the taxpayers. We did this entire project and did not have to raise any tax dollars to do it. The new Ferguson is fabulous. The new Ferguson, the quality of the air, you can just feel the difference. I've already had a lot less people sick from the beginning of the year, which has been nice. Our environmentally friendly issues, like our green roof is great for our kids. They can actually go out there and garden and explore the outdoors from the inside. Our classrooms have all the extra little things, like the differentiated lighting. So no matter what time of the day it is, the lights take over. They know exactly how much light you need to be successful in your classroom. So kids are really understanding that, you know, we need to take care of what we have and we need to take care of our earth, kind of as a result of having our new building. Guaranteed energy savings projects are rapidly achieving widespread use in government and public sector entities, like in Allegheny County, the Pennsylvania Farm Show Complex, and the York City School District, because they offer a means of overcoming constrained capital budgets, aging and inefficient buildings and equipment, and limited maintenance and resources, while at the same time providing invaluable opportunities to reduce our consumptive footprint and to protect our economic future, our social future, and our environmental future. It just makes sense.